Hello, welcome. In this video we explain how the USSR reacted John F. Kennedy's assassination. In the USSR, the assassination of Kennedy was a major problem. One that was tackled in all possible ways. It was a warm, sunny day as the motorcade of the 35th U.S. president moved along Elm Street in Dallas, Texas. The car roof had been removed to give people a glimpse of their chosen one. Having exchanged a few words with his wife Jacqueline, Kennedy turned to the crowd and waved a couple of times. A moment later, at precisely 12.30 Central Standard Time, Two of three shots fired from the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository struck the president, who died half an hour later in the hospital. The news of the assassination sent shockwaves across the entire world, including the Soviet Union. General Secretary Nikita Khrushchev was awakened by an aide with the words, Kennedy's been killed. According to some accounts, the first thing he asked was, did we have anything to do with it? The Soviet leader's puzzling question had a certain logic to it. As it soon turned out, the accused Lee Harvey Oswald had connections with the USSR. See our article here for details. He had lived there for two years, applied unsuccessfully for Soviet citizenship, married a Russian woman, become disillusioned with the socialist system, and then, in 1962, a year before the assassination, returned to his homeland. When the news broke, the KGB held a series of emergency meetings. Reports declassified in 2017 say that the head of the KGB residency in New York, Colonel Boris Ivanov, told his team that Kennedy's assassination was a problem and more trouble was expected. Under Kennedy, relations between the superpowers had entered a partial thaw. Back in May 1963, five months before his assassination, Kennedy had stated, for, in the final analysis, our most basic common link is that we all inhabit this small planet. We all breathe the same air. We all cherish our children's future. And we are all mortal. He had even expressed a wish to work with the Soviet Union to put a man on the moon. John Logston, a former member of NASA's advisory council, said that Kennedy suggested it to Khrushchev, but the Soviet leader refused, now that the U.S. president was dead. The Soviet leadership feared that radical anti-Soviet forces could take advantage of the situation. Archival documents indicate that the Kremlin was in a state of shock and turmoil. The Soviet leadership was concerned that in the absence of a U.S. leader, some irresponsible general might launch a missile strike.